Before we get into today's edition of Just the Truth, Mike Lindell sent me a note yesterday. He has a special for the six-piece towel set, 25 bucks when you use promo code Joey. Just go to MyPillow.com, use promo code Joey. You'll get the $25 offer on the six-piece towel set, and I promise you, these will be the most comfortable, the most absorbent towels that you own. MyPillow.com, use promo code Joey, get the six-piece towel set for just $25. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit MyPhDWeightLoss.com. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Appreciate you joining me. Grab a cup of coffee. Let's get started. Here's what we're going to be covering today. Donald Trump received some good news yesterday. Even after Democrats dramatically moved to change their presidential ticket and got an apparent jolt of momentum temporarily, famed election analyst and statistical guru Nate Silver still names the former president as his favorite to win. Israeli airstrikes kill most senior Hezbollah military commander yesterday. He's accused in the deaths of the 12 children and teens in last weekend's attack. And a Secret Service sniper warns that another assassination attempt could be imminent as the agency's failures are exposed and could encourage other would-be attackers to try one attack of their own. As expected, Israel launched an airstrike in the Lebanese capital, Beirut, yesterday, uh, killing a Hezbollah commander accused in the slaughter of 12 children in a rocket attack last weekend at this uh, uh, soccer match. The Israeli military confirmed in an ex post that it had taken out Fuad Shukur in the uh, strike, Hezbollah's most senior military commander. He's believed to be responsible for Saturday's massacre at the soccer field in the Israel controlled Golan Heights. IDF said Shukur had directed Hezbollah's attacks against Israel since October the 8th and had killed numerous Israelis and foreign nationals over the years. The IDF carried out a targeted strike in Beirut on the commander responsible for the murder of the children in Majdul Shams and the killing of numerous additional Israeli civilians, they wrote in a statement announcing the results of the airstrike. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu pledged a swift, harsh, and painful response to the vicious rocket attack by Hezbollah, which also injured 40 civilians last weekend. He said, these children are our children. The state of Israel will not and cannot let this pass. Our response will come and it will be harsh. And that it was. It was quick and it was harsh. We don't know if that was the end or not. Uh, Several others injured in yesterday's strike in the southern suburbs of Beirut, an area known as a stronghold for the Iran-backed terror group. The attack consisted of three missiles launched from an aerial drone, according to the NNA, Lebanon State News Agency. Flights to the Beirut airport were canceled starting yesterday because of fears of disruption caused by Israel's retaliatory strike. Since the attack on the soccer field, Israeli forces have conducted several airstrikes in southern Lebanon, including a drone attack yesterday that reportedly killed two Hezbollah operatives. IDF followed that strike with additional barrages that destroyed several of the Islamist extremist groups, weapons caches, as well as infrastructure in Lebanon. Hezbollah has denied any role in last week, weekend's ta- attack. No surprise, Israel's strike on, uh, strike on Hezbollah yesterday prompted anger from Lebanon's allies, and the country's foreign minister condemned the operation and ur- it urged an international response to the attack. Vice President Kamala Harris told reporters after arriving in Atlanta for a campaign rally that we'll tell you about a little bit later, said, I wanted to address what happened over the last few hours in terms of the Middle East and be very clear, Israel has the right to defend itself. And I unequivocally support Israel's right to remain secure and defend the security of Israel. She said, what we know in particular is, yes, it has the right to defend itself against a terrorist organization, which is exactly what Hezbollah is. But all that being said, we still must work on a diplomatic solution to end these attacks. We will continue to do that work, she said. The Israeli Defense Forces announced that it had carried out the airstrike 
uh, that had targeted Fuad Shakur. Uh, the IDF later claimed that its strike eliminated him, although the terror group had not yet confirmed his death. Sukur has a $5 million bounty from the U.S. Rewards for Justice program for his central role in, in the 1983 bombing of the U.S. Marine Corps barracks in Beirut that killed 241 U.S. military personnel and wounded 128 others. And this is a very important part that we must remember. I, I wasn't aware of this until doing a little research and, and learning about this uh, this strike by Israel yesterday. This was a bad guy. Uh, my question is, does Israel, since they took him out, do they get the five million bounty, uh, or did they, or does Israel just consider uh, that's part of what we've already given them? This guy uh, killing two hundred forty one U.S. military personnel. Wounding 128 others, we should be thanking Israel for for removing him from the face of this earth. Uh, obviously, it's something that we have been un- unable to do in all these years since the uh, uh, the attack in 1983. State Department Deputy Spokesperson Vidra Patel said during a briefing, "We're continuing to work toward a diplomatic resolution that would allow Israeli and Lebanese civilians to return to their homes and live in peace and security." We certainly want to avoid any kind of escalation. And I agree, we do want to avoid any escalation. But we also have to remember that in both instances, in the South, where the Hamas terrorists took out uh, a, a kibbutz near Oz, which I visited back in March, the Hamas terrorists struck uh, and killed hundreds at a, at a music festival in, in the southern part of Israel. They drew first blood, and now Israel is doing what it needs to do to protect itself from further strikes just like that. In the north, those kids went to play soccer on Saturday. Their families were out there. It was just a normal Saturday when Hezbollah chose to launch their rocket attack. Now, I know they deny it, but I also trust that Israel has confirmed this, and Israel knows who is responsible for the attack before they would respond. I trust Israel that much. I'm not going to believe what what, uh, Hezbollah has to say, knowing that they're terrorists. Sure, Hezbollah denies it. Of course they do. But again, I believe what Israel said. Israel confirmed the types of rocket. They confirmed that these are Iranian-made. And so Hezbollah can't start talking, and nor can Washington start talking about the diplomatic solution. Again, Hezbollah this time drew first blood. Now they're going to have to pay the consequences. White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre responded to the news of the uh, attack in real time, saying that she didn't have an immediate comment available, but adding that obviously we're aware of the reports out there. I leave it to the Isra- to Israel to speak for their own military operations. Lebanese Foreign Minister Abdallah Abu Habib said the strike hit the southern suburbs of Beirut, which serves as the heart of Hezbollah's operations. Habib announced Lebanon would file a complaint with the United Nations, even as he urged Hezbollah to avoid major escalation. Yeah, file, file the complaint. Let, let, the, uh, let the United Nations uh, look at all the evidence. Let, let them look at what happened at, on that soccer field last Saturday. Iran proxies quickly joined the condemnation of the attack, which we hadn't heard anything from these uh, Iranians and and those who are friendly to the Iranians. We didn't hear anything from them condemning the attack on the soccer field last Saturday, did we? Hamas labeled the strike as a dangerous escalation, and the Houthis called the attack a blatant violation of Lebanon's sovereignty. Well, uh, what do you call the rocket attacks on Israel last Saturday? Is that not also a violation of Israel's sovereignty? You know, don't you just love how these groups come out and, and they they make these declarations and, and they just seem like they're just uh, they're, they're just disturbed and, and they're upset. They can't believe that this is happening. Yet in in the end, they're the ones who have caused it. They're the ones who planned this. They're the ones who 
decided that they were going to take lives in Israel last Saturday with these kids out there playing soccer. Iran also condemned the attack. Iranian foreign minister spokes, uh, spokesperson Marizia Afkam said that it goes without saying that the regional states, especially the resistant Lebanese people, will thwart the Zionist regime's plot under the guise of extremism and sectarianism in the region like before through maintaining their unity and national solidity, solidarity as well as strong determination. Uh, she said, the trend of spreading of violence and extremism in the region, which it emanates from an engineered crisis in the region, is in line with serving the objectives and aggressive plots of the Zionists. Now, how do you call this an engineered crisis? Again, take, take a look in the mirror there. Take a look at what you're part of. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864 Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey, at joeyhudson.com. Soon going to be four years ago that I started my journey with Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition. I lost 30 pounds pretty quickly, I might add, and I've been able to maintain that for almost four years now. It'll be four years coming up in July. If this is the year that you have decided that you're going to get healthy, that you're going to lose that weight, that visceral fat that's so uh, damaging around your your waist, then now's the time to start. Let me encourage you to make that call today. 864-252-4925. Set up your initial consultation with PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition. Boy, am I glad that I met Dr. Ashley Lucas uh, four years ago and that she got me on the right path to getting healthy. You're going to be able to do things that you may have thought you'd never be able to do again. Uh, play with the kids, the grandkids. Be able to to hike and, and walk and uh, maybe play a full 18 round uh, hole of golf and be able to do it and not get so winded. Because when you take that excess weight off, you're just going to feel better. You're going to be able to focus. You're going to be able to sleep better. Your overall health is just going to be improved. 864 252 4925. Call, set up your initial c- consultation. Find them online at myphdweightloss.com. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. Donald Trump received some pretty good news yesterday, even after Democrats dramatically moved to change the leader of their ticket from Joe Biden to Vice President Kamala Harris in their presidential ticket. Uh, And and we assume that this is going to get the final blessing of the DNC when they convene in Chicago in just a few weeks. Uh, This, uh, of course, gave the Democrats a a jolt of momentum. Uh, No one can argue with that. We, we have to give that to them, even though we don't like it. Uh, Kamala Harris has surprised me with uh, being able to attract some pretty uh, large crowds. She was in Atlanta last night. We'll talk about that in just a minute. She's been able to raise a lot of money. $200 million is nothing to shake your head at. She was able to, according to her campaign, recruit 170,000 volunteers. That, that's something to be, there's something to be said about that. But even with all of that happening, and yes, it, 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 it was a good week for Kamala Harris. Famed election analyst and statistical guru, Nate Silver, who is a master at predicting who will win these types of races, and, and he's been pretty accurate for a number of years, he still says that former President Donald Trump is his favorite pick to win come November. His election forecast model gives Trump a 61.3% chance of prevailing in the Electoral College, while Vice President Kamala Harris is at 38.1%. Silver pre- previously chose Trump, uh, giving him a 65.7% chance of victory over President Joe Biden, so a, a slight difference, a, a slight better lead uh, when he was going to be facing off with Joe Biden. Uh, this during his model rollout last month, prior to everyone knowing that Joe Biden was going to bail and allow Kamala to to come in behind him and take his position. In his most recent assessment, Silver included a slew of polling averages that gave Trump slight advantages nationally and in most of the battleground states, not in Wisconsin uh, yet, where Harris uh, is ahead, according to a number of polls there. And, you know, Donald Trump, says he wants to win Wisconsin badly. He wants to show that Republicans can be competitive in Wisconsin once again. 
Uh, prior to Joe Biden dropping out, things were looking good in Wisconsin, just as they were even in New Hampshire. A, a Republican hasn't won New, in New Hampshire in a long, long time. Uh, that's turned around, too, with Kamala Harris. Still, Silver's analysis showed that Harris rapidly gained ground on Trump in some polling. His model also gave Harris a 53.5% chance of winning the popular vote compared to Trump's 46.5%. But this wouldn't be unusual. This would not be unusual at all for Kamala Harris, just like Hillary Clinton, to win the popular vote but lose the Electoral College. And you know what? We don't care. I mean, I would love for Donald Trump to just just wipe her out, win the, the popular vote and the Electoral College. But we know with large states like California, it makes it hard to do. So I'm okay with an Electoral College victory. Are you? Are you good with that? Because I just want to see Donald Trump back in the Oval Office, and I want to see Kamala Harris sent back to California retired. Last month, Nate uh, Silver's assessment, which was based on 40,000 simulations run through his model, pegged Joe Biden with a 47.2% chance of edging out Trump, 47.1% with the national popular vote. Again, that was much tighter than what it's showing with Kamala Harris. The last Republican presidential candidate to win the popular vote was George W. Bush when he uh, secured his reelection in 2004, uh, 20 years ago. Again, I'm not too concerned. I'd like for Donald Trump to win the popular vote so there's no argument uh, about the Electoral College again. I just want to win. And the only way to win is to win the Electoral vote. Mr. Silver promoted his model as a direct descendant of the 538 election forecast. Silver founded 538, which is named after the 538 votes available in the Electoral College and departed from it last year. 538 has been one of the rare election forecasts that projected Biden was most likely to emerge victorious in 2024. It suspended its forecast after Biden abruptly dropped out of the race on July the 21st. Now, Biden, of course, promptly endorsed Harris. Well, actually, promptly is not a good word to say because he did not promptly endorse Kamala Harris. And his first uh, media release saying that he was going to drop out, he did not endorse Kamala Harris. Only a few minutes later to put out a second notice saying that, yes, he he did, in fact, support Kamala Harris. It, w- it was very obvious in that first statement that Biden released. It's very obvious when he didn't immediately endorse Kamala Harris. We don't know what what happened behind the scenes back there. That's something we'll probably read about in a future book, maybe years from now. Harris's favorability ratings in a number of polls quickly shot upwards, and the recently rebranded Kamala Harris uh, promoted a roughly $200 million haul in less than a week after Biden's exit. Preliminary polling has generally shown the race tightening, but with less than 100 days out from the election, pollsters are racing to recalibrate for the new, new dynamics of having Kamala Harris leading the Democrat ticket. Trump retains a two percentage point edge nationally in the latest uh, Real Clear Politics aggregate of polls, but battleground state polling is still a little light compared to a number of other surveys scoring a Trump versus Biden matchup. So we need a little more data of Trump versus Harris before some of these guys can can really give some some educated guesses here. Silver was quoted on X as saying, roughly speaking, the strategy of the Harris campaign should be to triangulate the strategy of Hillary 2016, the Harris 2020 primary campaign, and Biden 2024, and do the exact opposite. (laughs) Uh, Yes, you don't want to do what Hillary did in 2016, do you? It's going to be interesting, folks. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be... uh, We're going to probably have some very tense moments between now and November. Silver had had been among the chorus of voices publicly encouraging Biden to step aside. He gained notoriety after successfully predicting 49 of 50 states in 2008 presidential election and was further 
vaulted to prominence by his prediction of President Barack Obama's 2012 victory when nobody thought Barack Obama had a chance. So I'm hoping that Nate Silver is right this year. I'm hoping that Nate Silver gets it right and Donald Trump does win the Electoral College. We'll see. Whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're just upgrading, you're totally remodeling the kitchen when it's time to get those new appliances. When you're ready for them, you don't want to have to wait weeks or even months to get started using them, right? Well, that's not the case when you shop with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. With over 11,000 square feet and 1,500 appliances at any, any given time, you can buy today and use today quite often. I'm talking about shopping with my friends at Discounted Appliance warehouse in Pickens. It's worth the short drive over to Pickens. Jeff, Johnny, Kyle, the whole team over there, they'll take good care of you. They have an award-winning service department, expert installation, extended warranties, and a discounted appliance warehouse. They treat you like family. You're more than just a credit card swipe to all the team over there. Discounted appliance warehouse. They're proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with manufacturer's warranties that cover parts and labor. You owe it to yourself if you're looking for a new appliance to head over to Pickens to Discounted Appliance Warehouse online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. Hope you'll join the conversation today, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey, at joeyhudson.com. The investigation of how a 20-year-old almost assassinated the GOP front runner is picking up steam. More information uncovered almost daily. The latest? Well, Secret Service sniper claims that another assassination attempt against a presidential candidate seems inevitable before Election Day because the attack on former President Donald Trump exposed the weakness in the Secret Service operations. This, according to a scathing letter that was circulated within the Secret Service yesterday. The letter read, and it was first published by Real Clear Politics, this agency needs to change, if not now, when? All caps, big question mark. The next assassination attempt in 30 days, question mark? We should all expect another attempt to happen before November. We've exposed our inability to protect our leaders due to our leadership. Now, this was sent to email addresses within the Secret Service Agency, Uh, Obviously, from someone within the agency, someone who had had access to their email system and could do a broadcast email to all the Secret Service agents. Law enforcement sources verified the authenticity of the letter to the New York Post. Uh, It was sent sometime Monday afternoon, again, to the entire Secret Service Uniform uh, Division, which is the agency's police force that secures the White House. The sniper demanded the resignation of high-level supervisors whom the agent accused of failing rank-and-file Secret Service staff. The letter read, Sadly, we have fallen short for years. We just got lucky and looked good doing it. I have conveyed these thoughts to not only supervisors, only to be brushed off as those with less experience somehow knew more than me. Secret Service supervisors, all caps, and and, uh, highlighted, knew better, and the foot soldiers working made the best of a bad situation. It went on to say that the reputation of the Secret Service and all these uh, agents had been marred by the failures of July the 13th, which resulted, of course, in Donald Trump being shot in the ear, a hero firefighter behind him being killed. The sniper said that today was a stain I will never be able to cleanse. Of course, two other people wounded as well. Fortunately, we uh, learned this week that they have returned home and are recuperating from home now. But it was a massive failure. And as more questions are being asked, the weakness of the Secret Service that day gets greater. The identity of the counter sniper who wrote the letter is unclear, according to officials. They describe themselves as a veteran of the Marine Corps and a member of Secret Service's counter-sniper team for more than 20 years. If this is true, then they know a little bit about the operations of the Secret Service. Uh, And again, the authenticity of the letter was confirmed uh, by sources to the New York Post. 
So at this point, there's no reason to suspect that this is not an authentic letter. Since the disastrous assassination attempt, of course, there's been a lot of heavy scrutiny on the Secret Service's handling to the point that Ms. Cheadle resigned. This letter suggests that maybe she was one of the targets of, of this Secret Service veteran. Law enforcement sources previously told the New York Post that a full 30 seconds elapsed between the when local police confronted the gunman and the first shots he fired at Trump, prompting questions as to why Trump was allowed to remain on the stage. And this is what we will eventually get to. Right now, we're still just getting bits and pieces of, of the evidence. We're getting text messages. Uh, they'll piece all of this together in a timeline that will tell us exactly what took place when. And that's the beauty of today's technology. That's the beauty of, of these agents texting one another. There's a record of that. You, and, and it has a timestamp on it. So we know when an agent texts another agent that they had seen this young man. We know for sure what time that was. And, and as we learned yesterday, uh, it appears that they knew about him about two hours earlier than they had previously told us. The acting Secret Service director said yesterday that agents were never warned that this young man was on the roof with a rifle. Now, that contradicts some of the previous information that we've received. We'll see, though. Again, we, we wait on the timeline. We wait on the final outcome of the investigation. Meanwhile, newly revealed footage from the site of the shooting showed local police circling the building that he shot from more than two minutes before the attack. So it's almost like this guy, they gave him plenty of time to get off a shot. I mean, two minutes is a long time. Two minutes is forever. 30 seconds, as mentioned a minute ago. 30 seconds is a long time when it's life and death. Because agents typically are trained to shoot to kill immediately upon feeling threatened. Which, that would be just a few seconds. Local police were in charge of the grounds where this young man fired from, we're told. And that's sort of what we're getting now is, is there's a bit of finger pointing going on. Again, the, the, one of the local SWAT teams from another county nearby said this past weekend that the Secret Service briefing that they were promised never took place. And it has to have you question how the Secret Service operates if, in fact, they didn't talk with some of the people they were expecting to secure the grounds prior to the event. Uh, Republican Ten Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn yesterday asked the Secret Service's new acting director why the public has lost trust in the agency's mission to protect following this July 13th assassination attempt. Blackburn read from the email, the agency needs to change, if not now, when? She asked the, the current FBI uh, deputy director, I'm sorry, the acting director, Ronald Rowe, if, in fact, the agency was going to learn from this and if some of the some of these changes are going to take place. Blackburn also read the last portion of the email uh, that was reportedly sent to the uh, to the Secret Service, stating that the motto of the U.S. Secret Service is CYA, an acronym for cover your A. You know what? Cover your behind. The Tennessee uh, Senator continued, the public has lost trust in the ability to execute the mission to protect, and I want to know how you feel about the fact that employees in your agency are worried about covering their behind and not worried about protecting a former president. Good question, Senator. Good question. Um, other questions being asked as well. For example, Republican Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley had released text messages on Monday from Butler County, Pennsylvania, showing that snipers had spotted the shooter about 90 minutes prior to the moment he fired multiple rounds toward the former president, ultimately killing uh, Corey Compatore and injuring 74-year-old James Copenhaver and 57-year-old David Dutch. Mr. Rowe, who took on the position of director after Kimberly Cheadle resigned last week, told Senator Blackburn that he is hurt by the email. He said, I'm hurt 
because my people are hurting right now. We need them, he said. The acting director added that emotions are raw within the agency right now and that he wants to hear more from the agent who wrote the email and described himself as a U.S. Marine as well as a 20-year veteran of the U.S. Secret Service. Rowe added that he is committed to reviewing things and being a change agent. Now, I hope that's true. I'll have to say, though, I watched part of the part of the hearing yesterday, and this guy at times was a, was a, a bit indignant of some of the questions being asked of him. Roe was grilled by Senator Mike Lee, a Republican from Utah, who asked how it was possible that Trump was allowed on stage 17 minutes after reports of a suspicious person. It's a good question. Uh, Roe said no information regarding a weapon on the roof was ever passed to our personnel. Again, there's some information that would lead uh, to contradict that. Lee said, how is that even possible? That information was in local law enforcement channels, but did not cross over and make it to the Secret Service awareness, Roe uh, Ro responded. So what he's saying right now is that local law enforcement, some of these agencies who are saying they were never briefed by the Secret Service, had this information, and it never made it to the Secret Service. Now, my question is this. With today's technology, why are they not on all on the same radio frequency? Why would one local agency have information and be talking about a potential uh, a, a, a person who could potentially cause harm to President Donald Trump and this conversation is not being shared with the, with the Secret Service? How is that even possible? Uh, of course, the, this letter comes after the FBI on Monday told reporters in a conference call that uh, this young man accessed uh, the, the roof of this building using HVAC equipment and piping. Uh, he then traversed multiple rooftops before he found a shooting position on top of a building. And some of the overhead, some of the drone shots of, of the building show you this, this part of the building where they have, there's like three major sections of this building. And in between two of the buildings is a smaller building with the HVAC unit that looks like you could hop on the HVAC HVAC unit and then hop up on the roof of the other which would allow you access to the roof of another and you could just walk right over there's been speculation that he used a ladder I don't think he even needed a ladder if in fact that's how he was able to get up on the roof again a lot of questions yet to be answered and we have to demand the answers to these questions hope you'll join the conversation today 864-477-JOEY 864-477-5639 Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey, at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford text line, you know, it's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here in the upstate. Let me take a minute to talk with you about our friends at Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, maybe a great pre-owned vehicle, one you can you could trust, or maybe you're looking to order that special vehicle. Uh, either way. If you want a new one, a brand new one, or a pre-owned that you can trust, the, the folks at Furman Ford, they're there to help you. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line because every single tra- transaction is important to them. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman. They do business the right way. When you uh, stop by, when you give them a call, or maybe when you just uh, send them a quick email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. And by the way, they also offer great service, and you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get it done. And you do not have had to purchase your vehicle at Furman Ford. It doesn't even have to be a Ford. They they service all makes and models. Visit my friends at Furman Ford online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. A lot of text messages yesterday. Let me share a few with you. Tony writes, Republicans need to shoved down Americans' throats that she incarcerated more blacks in California for very minor offenses. So Tony, of course, talking about former uh, district attorney, former attorney general of California, uh, one and only Kamala Harris, who does have a record of putting black men behind bars. Wonder if the uh, black population will eventually understand this. We'll see. Faye writes on the text line, Yes, Joey, I bought many American flags, and actually it's hard to find ones made here in the USA. It always makes my blood boil to see our flag made in China. 
I had an uncle who referred to Walmart as going to Chinatown. I still share a YouTube message every morning. Good job, Joey. Thank you, Faye. Appreciate that. And this is in reference to, uh, I told you yesterday that the, um, the U.S. Congress, U.S. Senate, U.S. House of Representatives passed a bill, sent it over to President Biden for his signature. No reason not to think that he won't sign it, but it requires any federal agency to purchase a all USA made flag cannot be purchasing the cheap knockoffs from China anymore. Christie writes, I never put much faith in any of the polls. We saw great polls for 2020 and look what happened. Lesson learned. She says you let some voters hear about these polls and they don't show up to vote, whether it be for their candidate, um, or maybe they think their candidate is so far ahead or they're so far behind. It means their vote doesn't matter. As far as Kamala and her money donations, she's just a new bobblehead for the Clintons and Obamas, so I'm sure she'll drag in the money. Soros Hollyweird and all the liberals who want America to fall uh, will fund this campaign. Christie says they're looking at the next eight years with this idiot doing their bidding. As far as Facebook, I've had many posts lost at the bottom of the feed, and the fact checks added to my post. I don't post much politics on there now due to that and the fact that I'm preaching to the choir on my friends list. Appreciate that. Uh, Texture says, Joe, buy our flags from Allegiance. They're higher, but they last longer, and they're made in the USA. Patty says, uh, they only buy American-made flags as well. Many of you, I got a lot of text messages and emails yesterday saying that you only buy American-made flags, and that's a good thing. Now, now again, this federal law will not prevent flags from being here from China. But no federal dollars, none of our tax money uh, can be used to buy a, a flag other than something that's made right here in our country. Chris writes, failure of imagination, what a joke. Just another excuse for not taking any accountability. He should be sent down the road as well. God bless his country. Chris is talking about the acting director of the Secret Service yesterday when being questioned by Senators uh, Blackburn and Grassley and and those on the Senate uh, committee in this hearing yesterday, uh, his explanation on what happened on July the 13th, he said, was a failure of imagination on the Secret Service agent's part. Now, I don't know exactly what that means. I don't know what failure of imagination is, and particularly when it it is uh, in reference to the Secret Service's failure to keep Donald Trump safe. I, I happened to have lunch with a law enforcement, retired law enforcement friend of mine yesterday. I asked him what failure of imagination could mean. His only thoughts was that as law enforcement officers are planning for an event, that they try to imagine what could go wrong. They try to think about any scenarios and they try to think outside of the box. If, if I'm a crook, if I'm trying to kill someone or, or rob someone or whatever, what would I do? They try to think like a bad guy. That was his that was his only thoughts on what failure of imagination could potentially mean. Uh, Jennifer writes, thank you for pounding out factual info about Kamala. It might still like be like preaching to the choir, but actually it fortifies your listeners with solid facts for the uninformed and the undecided voter. It's disheartening to me to say that we now live in a political environment where where the other party literally operates on lies and purposely spews out misleading information. That's the story of the Biden-Harris era, and we can already see it getting worse now that Harris is the lead candidate. Jennifer continues, people who love this country must do serious battle against the potential fall of America. That's not overstated. If Kamala Harris goes to the White House, our country will suffer irreversible damage. And you're right. Uh, we, We can't allow that to happen. And we're not going to allow that, that to happen. And that's why we're, we're building our own army here uh, each day as we share ideas with one another, as you email me, as you text me, and as we talk every day. We're sharing ideas on how we turn the vote out, how we get our friends to go to vote on November the 5th. Everyone who's listening to me right now, you're going to vote. I know you are. And that's important. But what's more important is how many people you take to the polls with you. What's more important is how many people you can influence to vote for Donald Trump that maybe otherwise wasn't going to vote for him or just wasn't going to vote at all. 
That's our job. And by the way, we, we talk a lot about polls and what the polls are showing. Uh, we may be witnessing the ultimate poll here. Vice President Kamala Harris headlined a rally last night in the battleground state of Georgia in the capital in Atlanta. She stood in front of the largest crowd of Democrat Party supporters since she became the likely Democrat nominee. Hours before she arrived in Atlanta, the Georgia State Convocation Center, which has a listed capacity of 8,000 people for concerts, was quickly filling up with supporters. Democrats say it's another sign of the energy and excitement that's returning to the party nine days after Joe Biden's blockbuster announcement that he was suspending his reelection campaign against Trump and endorsing his vice president. Biden's immediate backing of Harris, uh, the Democrats say, has ignited a surge of endorsements and enthusiasm that they have not seen for the, uh, in the party for quite some time. The vice president wrote in a social media post on her way to Atlanta, Freedom is on the ballot this November. That is why we'll be in Atlanta tonight at the Stallion to talk about the stakes of this election. Rapper Megan the Stallion performed at the rally, we're told. I wasn't there. <laughs> Don't care to go. Uh, which received nearly 20,000 RSVPs ahead of the event. Now, th- the rally was very similar to what Trump does. You can go online, RSVP, uh, then show up and first come, first serve. And, and again, the, the center is, is said to have a, an 8,000 capacity, and it looked as though she is going to fill it up. So guess who announced yesterday they're going to be at that same same arena? Donald J. Trump and his vice presidential nominee, J.D. Vance. They're going to be there this weekend to fill the same center. Let's see who gets the most people there. Maybe that would be the ultimate poll, you think? That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Just click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Be sure and like, subscribe, uh, follow me on my YouTube channel. Just search for Joey Hudson. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Be sure and forward this edition of just the truth to some friends just click on the share button send it to a few of your contacts because if we're going to build our community and if we're going to win in november we got to build an army of conservatives the way we beat joe biden is through educating people and no better way than encouraging them to listen to just the truth hey keep those comments coming via the firm and ford text line 864-477-JOEY 864-477-5639 your emails always welcome as well joey at joeyhudson.com don't forget to take advantage of the my pillow special 25 dollars for the my towels six piece towel set when you use promo code joey just go to mypillow.com always use promo code joey we're back again tomorrow hope you will be too remember god's got this he's still in control